Hello there guys, Francis Gray here and today we're going to be making a diorama on everybody's favourite dream demon, Freddy Krueger. Okay guys, so this is going to be the fifth uh, horror icon from a collection. Um, the first one was uh, Charles Play Chucky, then there was uh, Michael Myers, the night he came home. Then I did Boris Karloff as the mummy, and then uh, more recently I did uh, the Grim Reaper in a graveyard. So yeah, so now I'm going to crack on with another icon, which is uh, Freddy Krueger. So this is a statue, a pre-built, pre pre-painted statue. I will be weathering it and adding a few little highlights here and there. But for the most part, I'm, uh, I really like the pose, I really like the stance, I really like the likeness. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good uh, likeness of Robert England. So I don't know if the camera's picking that up. But yeah, it's rather nice. The, the, the shirt's a bit on the clean side, so I'll be uh, giving that a black wash at some point. But anyway, getting back to the statue, it's uh, made by Kotobukiya. I think it's one to six scale, and uh, it uh, was part of uh, what, what they call the Art FX lineup. So it's, but it's basically Kotobukiya that made it. Uh, lovely detail on the statue. I have gone ahead and I have reviewed this statue. Uh, if you're interested in just a review of this statue, there'll be a link in the description bar below. But uh, getting back to the actual build, the idea I have is uh, a similar base, like an L-shaped 90 degree angle base, wooden base. Uh, same routed edges, uh, and then we're going to have Freddy uh, more or less straight on uh, reaching out towards you. Uh, and then we're going to have some tiles on the back. We're going to have a big boiler, we're going to have uh, maybe a, a concrete floor and I want to make it look like it's a dream sequence so everything's going to be a bit like uh, red or scorched or with the tiles I might do the, some red, some green to match his jumper, I'm not really too sure, too sure of that yet but we'll see how we get on but uh, yeah it should be a fun one um, so for the next part, I suppose I should uh, make the base. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I cut a new piece of wood in a similar shape as uh, some of my other horror builds, my other horror collection. So this is going to be the next one. Uh, so yes, yeah, so uh, same again, I uh, just got a, a, a blank piece of wood that's usually used for shelving. I uh, took the measurements, uh, cut it in uh, in half, and then I used the router bit to route the edges, and then basically just drilled three holes, bit of glue, and then sandwiched and put three long screws underneath. So now it's a perfect uh, 90 degree angle. So yes, yeah, so uh, first things first, uh, I'm going to map out uh, some... Uh, some of these, so these are basically these like little uh, tiles, pre-made tiles that you can buy. I uh, usually get them in arts and crafts stores. So the idea is, I was thinking about uh, applying these in place. Now I've got some tile uh, divider uh, things which uh, you're supposed to use for proper tiles. So this will keep an even uh, spacing. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if it'll line up perfect because of the, this is a pre-built uh, base. So I'm going to map it out, see if it works. If it does, fantastic. Let's go ahead and stick it all down.
Okay guys, so it looks like it is a pretty close fit, not perfect, but uh, pretty good enough to go ahead and uh, map all these out. Now unfortunately these didn't work, uh, the problem is these are made for uh, life size tiles, uh, so as you can see there, when you make a straight line, that's actually bigger than what... Uh, than what the actual thing is, the actual tile is itself. So unless I go around trimming all the edges off of these, I can't see them working. So yeah, so uh, what I might do is I might just make a straight line going up and down and then map them out, leave this to dry, and then I'll know, I might build them up in sections, so to speak. Okay guys, so change of plan, instead of leaving these to to dry, I think I might just crack on and just try and get as much on there as possible and then I, I can probably move it around with a, uh, with a ruler or something, just to try and straighten out a little bit. Okay guys, so as you can see there, I've had to use different uh, tiles, so they're not all the exact same pattern, but uh, hopefully it'll, uh, I'll be able to rework it somehow, I'll, I'll go over it a little bit and sand it all down and they'll all look uh, more or less the same. So yeah, so we'll leave that to dry now and then, uh, and then we'll crack on with the next part. Okay guys, so as you can see there, uh, the tiles have been left to harden, so that's nice and dry now, they're not going to go anywhere. It uh, did fill out quite nicely, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. There is a different design for each one, so hopefully we can correct that now. Uh, the idea is I'm going to go ahead with some uh, all-purpose smooth finish filler, which is this stuff here. Uh, and I'm basically just going to apply it on with a bit of scrap uh, plastic, uh, put it all across, and then I've just got a regular coffee stirrer, which uh, I'm going to go in between the lines and uh, groove out uh, definition of the tiles. So yeah, so hopefully uh, it all goes well.
Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll leave that to dry. Okay guys, so for the next part I went ahead and I created a 3D uh, file or 3D image uh, for what I think uh, a boiler would look like uh, for Freddy Krueger. So the idea is I basically wanted it just uh, one long like rectangle shape with a, uh, like a triangle base top uh, and then a, a front facing uh, grill that opens up and uh, obviously uh, a hollowed inside so then we can uh, house uh, like a lighting system inside and then uh, just these like strut uh, parts to the side there so yeah so now that this is created I'll uh, I'll go ahead and uh, start printing this off. Okay guys, so it turns out that uh, the the main file was too big to print all in one go. So I've had to print off into, uh, into different sections, so I've had to split it up into three parts. So this is part A. Now uh, unfortunately it, uh, it warped a little bit down here. Uh, now I've just re realised now the reason why is because I didn't add a uh, what they call a bedding which basically gives it a layer to print up on so that's my mistake being new to 3D printing uh, it's, uh, I, I want to go ahead and I want to use this because it is the right dimensions but unfortunately there's quite a few bits wrong with it there's, uh, the side parts didn't form uh, this part is really uh, untidy uh, where I tried to try to print it and it didn't uh, oh this needs cleaning as well uh, and then I also discovered that the actual uh, grate that uh, goes on the front of the uh, the boiler wasn't the right dimension now I'm pretty sure whether I did make it the right dimension in the 3d file but uh, unfortunately it uh, didn't go right so I need to go back to uh, the drawing board with that one and uh, create a new one but for the most part uh, it's not the best 3d print in the world but it is definitely usable so next stage is uh, I'll go ahead and I'll print the next part and then I'll try and work on this okay guys so back to the drawing board on this one turns out that uh, the actual grill that I made uh, was a bit too small so I've had to basically create a new one to the right uh, schematical size uh, so that should uh, that should fit now uh, also a few of these struts didn't uh, form very well uh, on the first print so I've gone ahead and I've printed these out separate so we can go ahead and stick these on at a later date okay guys so I went ahead and I uh, printed the next part so uh, so this is the next part of that there. Uh, unfortunately, it does look like there's a tiny bit of size difference there, uh, but we can hopefully um, hide them with the these side struts. Um, not 100 percent sure yet, but I'll make it work. Uh, and then there was this part that went on there. Unfortunately, that didn't print out very well as well. That's obviously my mistake because I'm new to 3D printing. I'm obviously doing something wrong. Uh, so I need to uh, go back to the drawing board with that but because that's the same dimension I can always flip it around the other side I'll find out which side looks the better for that but anyway that's supposed to go there on top of the boiler and then I went ahead and I made a new uh, grate and I am thankful that uh, this time uh, this one's turned out a lot better so as you can see there we've got the makings of uh, of a boiler. So for the next part uh, I need to print off the uh, the roof.
Okay guys, so the roof uh, turned out pretty good. Uh, there's no, uh, not simple in nature, but I just like that it, uh, it, it didn't warp in any way and it turned out pretty nice. So as you can see, that goes on there up there. So let's move the camera for a better angle. There we go. So the boiler is coming along. Uh, and for next part, uh, oh yeah, I also printed off some of these uh, some side struts um, but unfortunately I think they've come out a different size uh, to the, to these ones here so I might need to file these down smooth and then print some more of these off so yeah uh, all fun and games uh, for the next part uh, before I start going ahead and uh, create uh, and adding all this together I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a 3D file uh, that houses like an inside grate so I can house some, like, what I'm thinking of is uh, some skulls, like some children's skulls. So yes, yeah, so I'll go ahead and I'll make uh, that file in the 3D printer. Okay guys, so back to the uh, drawing board again. So now that we've got our main structure uh, of, the, uh, of the boiler for the Freddy Krueger diorama, uh, I've decided to make a like an inside grill that uh, so imagine this upside down uh, the other way so it's flipped around obviously I've got to print it printed out this way so it, uh, it's easier to print uh, the other way around I have to make loads of supports so yeah so the idea is this will then fit inside um, inside the boiler and then uh, and then we can house some uh, skulls on top and then this hollow part under here this is where we can add some lighting effects so yeah so I'll go ahead and print this out now okay guys so it's now printed and as you can see there it's turned out pretty nice now the moment of truth does it fit inside <laughs> yes it does I don't know if it's uh, showing up there, but you can see there it uh, has turned out really nice, right size and everything. So once the uh, the front grill is on there as well, that'll work really good. So uh, next part, uh, I suppose I should look for some skulls. Okay guys, so for what we're going to do inside the boiler is going to be some human skulls or some child skulls uh, to fit with uh, Freddy Krueger's M.O. Uh, so yeah, so I basically I found a generic skull design 3D file online. Uh, I'm sorry, I, 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 I can't remember who the original creator was. It was just a free file on, uh, on uh, Thingiverse, I think. Uh, so basically I just copied it another seven times and then just housed like a, a strut connecting them all uh, and then un via the backs as well. So a strut there, then all through the backs and then a strut at the front. So it should print it all off as, uh, as just all one piece. So the idea is print these out, paint them up and then these should go inside the uh, Freddy Krueger's boiler rather nice. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I 3D printed some smaller skulls. So I've got a bunch of them here in my hands. Um, they're, they're still a bit, they still need clean up, because there's quite a lot of them are still attached. But you get the idea. So they, need, they all need cleaning up and uh, repin. But the idea is, oh, sorry about that, the idea is, uh, displaying them inside somehow like that so with there being like an inside light illuminating up maybe flicker bulbs maybe just a bright red light I don't know but with all these being bent and charred and then the light coming out underneath and giving it like a flame effect I think that will look uh, really awesome so yeah so now that I've got all the main key parts together uh, I suppose I should crack on with building it.
Okay guys, so for the next part I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try and clean all these various parts up. Okay guys, so this is what we've basically got at the moment. So as you can see there, this now fits in place lovely. Uh, this also is a nice nice tight fit. Uh, this part, uh, it, it hasn't turned out too great. I still think I can save it, I still think I can use it. It has got a few bumps and lumps and scratches, but let's face it, you know, I very much doubt it would be... Uh, in prime condition in uh, Freddy's boiler room so the odd little indentation might actually work in our favour so yes yeah, so uh, for, the, for the most part so far so good it's not perfect but it's not terrible neither so it's obviously uh, a work in progress so for the next part I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a little bit of super glue on the inside of this to uh, to, to, to keep that in place and then uh, I might go ahead and I might glue that in place as well Okay guys, so for the next part I'm going to run over this with, uh, uh, with a sanding block basically just to try and smooth it out a little bit now some of these tiles are, are quite uh, uh, deep compared to some of the others so I think I might have to go over the top part with some uh, wood filler but uh, before we can go ahead and do that I want to try and get some of this, uh, this other plaster off Okay guys, so I can see there that uh, it's all nice and clean again. 
the reason why I had to get rid of all of it was uh, this plaster is uh, dried like a, like, a, like a bit rubbery so it wouldn't have been great to paint over so it's okay for the insides of the uh, of the tiles uh, but it's not great for the uh, front facing parts so for the next stage we're, uh, we're going to go in with another bit of uh, cut off bit of plastic but this time I'm going to put some uh, some wood filler on the tiles Okay guys, so we'll go ahead and we'll leave this to dry and then we'll probably give it another sand. Okay guys, so for the next part I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try and clean up all these little skulls. Okay guys, so there's one down and there's about another 14 left to go. Okay guys, so I think I'm done. Uh, 16 small skulls all nicely cleaned. Okay guys, so the uh, the wood filler is nice and hardened now, so time to go over the sanding block. Okay guys, so for the next part, uh, as you can see there, that the tiles have now been given a sand, so this I still think they're going to need a little bit of TLC. So uh, we'll crack on with that in a moment. But for now, I wanted to map out uh, roughly what's going to go where. So as you can see here, uh, this is where the boiler's up to at the moment. It's not glued on just yet. I still need to do those parts soon. I just wanted to line everything up and just see where everything's going to lay out. So. I want this to be parallel with uh, with the line of the routed edge. So I'll be looking at about here. Okay, so um, let's trace around this. Okay, now as for Freddy, uh, obviously the base you get with the statue is uh, too big. Now, yeah, it could be cut down, could be trimmed. Uh, I might still do that. I'm not right too sure yet. Uh, but for now, I want to, I want to make sure that uh, he's exactly where I want him to be. So I was thinking about straight on here like this. So obviously you see this light emitting out of the uh, 
out the boiler and then you got the skulls and then it leads straight up to uh, Freddy so I don't want them to be too centre forward and I don't want them to be too centred back so I was thinking about roughly here let's try and trace around the shoe as best as we can Okay, so we now know where Freddy is going to be pegged to. So, yeah, for the next part, uh, I found these, uh, which were in my bit box. Uh, basically, I believe, if memory serves me correctly, these were accessory parts to um, a, a Batman... Arkham origin statue, I believe. These were right on the base, and I, I did a custom years ago, uh, and I didn't need the base no more, and I cut the base up into bits, and then these were some of the bits, and I thought these would be fantastic as uh, like a thermostat or something like that, like a, you know, those things we turn off to uh, pressure, uh, sorry, a pressure valve. Uh, so I thought that would be pretty cool. So, yeah, so I'm not right too sure uh, how it would line up or how it would connect. Uh, I think this might need trimming down so it's a little bit further back. But, uh, but for the most part, I think, uh, I think it'll be pretty cool. I think it might work really nicely. So I just thought I'd introduce that to the video. I'll put that to the uh, to the side for now. So yeah, so uh, next part uh, will be to try and do a bit more of this boiler. Okay guys, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start gluing some of this up. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll leave that to dry. Okay guys, so now that the uh, tiles have been grey primed, the reason why I grey primed them now was I wanted to see uh, what it looked like because uh, obviously I knew it would have to be reworked so I knew there'd be problems with it so I wanted to grey prime it now and then all the little imperfections stand out so it makes life easier for me later on so as you can see there I'll, uh, I'll give you a close so as you can see there there's, uh, there's still quite a lot uh, wrong with this so the original patterns are still coming through so same again, uh, I'm going to have to go back over it with uh, another uh, load of uh, either wood filler or uh, individually sculpt over them all with uh, Abe's Epoxy Modern Clay. So I'm, I might try the uh, wood filler first because it's the cheaper option. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I cut all these pieces of, uh, of the valve. Um, so uh, so I've cut it all in a 90 degree straight cut angle so everything just uh, lines up uh, really nice. Uh, I chopped the top part of this off so it's not as long so it's now uh, level with the uh, with the boiler so it's going to be there roughly. And then uh, this part here is going to connect to the bottom down here and then that is going to line up to there. Now I've also cut an excess piece off here which is going to be housed there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a screw in here and then super glue this in place and then once the glue's dried I'm going to push a bit of Aves Epoxy modelling clay in here uh, to house uh, around the screw. Or at least that's the idea anyway. Uh, 
and then also I need to try and get this to connect to this as well so same again I might put a screw bit of AIDS epoxy in there uh, mush it in there, spring it around and then just uh, leave it to dry so yeah so that's the idea um, the only problem is I did originally want this to be stuck out a little bit fair, a little bit out but now I've just realised that I chopped too much off this bottom part here so luckily I did keep a bit of excess so I can uh, chop off and add a little bit more if I want to now this part here we can always hide that later on so yeah so for now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try and attach this to this and then this to this Okay guys, so I've, uh, I've measured this out towards the uh, to the lines. Um, so I've measured off where I need to cut. So in theory, if I cut this excess bit off the end, then uh, it should line up okay with this. So I'll go ahead and I'll do this next. Okay guys, so that's now been cut. So. Uh, yeah, uh, what I'll do next is I'll just add a bit of super glue and then I'll leave that to dry and then I might house a, a long, longer screw in through this hole here. Okay guys, I had to cut away there briefly, basically halfway through uh, screwing this in I realised that it was one of those uh, fancy bits rather than just the normal uh, Phillips or the normal uh, the normal screwdriver type so yeah so I needed a special piece so I thought instead of leaving the camcorder recording uh, I'll just cut camera and then just you didn't really miss anything it's literally just screwing it in so yeah so uh, so far so good okay guys so I went ahead and I've mixed a bit of Abe's epoxy uh, part A and part B together uh, so for the next part I'm just basically just going to try and uh, get it on in there, mush it down, try and get it in and around the uh, the screw and then I'm going to do the this side down here around this screw as well. Okay guys, so I've got a tiny bit of Abe's epoxy uh, left over, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to try and cover this front part where the seam is. Okay guys, so you can see there, it's not perfect, but uh, obviously you won't ever see that uh, seam line anymore. Uh, so you can if you turn on it on the back, but uh, obviously we can go over with a little bit more waves uh, later on, but uh, for the most part you're not going to see it anyway, so I might just see it, just leave it. Okay guys, I'm going to start uh, cleaning this out, out by... Uh, using a, a beveled file to uh, try and uh, get all the rubbish bits out of uh, the, the in between the tiles so it gives it a bit more of a definition I suppose
this new idea. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask and tape these sides off and then I'm going to mix some uh, epoxy um, resin uh, in the middle of it and I'm just going to basically spread it around so it gives it a nice uh, protective layer over the top and I'll also make these uh, like this rubbery inside bit uh, nice and solid so it'll be easier to paint. Okay guys, so with this bottom part uh, not 3D printing at a straight angle, there's a bit of a, a delve here. So obviously you can see there's quite a gap between that and that. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just, I've just rolled out a little thin bit of Abe's epoxy. Uh, I'm just basically just going to put it in place and then I'm going to cut off the excess. Any excess parts that are uh, pulled off I'm thinking about just trying to apply them in some of these seams here to basically just fill them out a little bit. Okay guys, so for the next part I want to go ahead and I want to bridge this up or cover this over to get rid of this seam. Uh, same on this side as well. Uh, best way to do that, uh, I've gone ahead and I've got an off cut bit of uh, thick cardboard. Uh, that that, uh, that should work out uh, rather nicely. So yeah, so I've uh, gone ahead and pre-measured it. So it's 3.5 centimetres wide by 19 centimetres uh, long. So yeah, so I'm just going to basically cut this out and I'm going to use the, this glue here. I think it's like a wood glue, uh, just extra strong. Uh, basically just to try and uh, glue it in place and bridge that gap. Okay guys, so for the next bit I've got some of these tiny little bead things that have got a little bit of sticky on the back and I'm basically going to use that as some rivets for this top piece here. Okay guys, so now that that's mapped out, uh, I'll go ahead and I'll just add a tiny bit of super glue to the tops to keep them in place. Okay guys, so for the next part, I went ahead and i done a little bit more work on the uh, boiler. Basically, I just filled in a couple of seam lines with some uh, some wood filler. Uh, I also used a little tiny bit of Aves epoxy model and clay in uh, some of these joints. Uh, not perfect, but uh, I needed to, dry, to harden and dry before I can go ahead and sand that down. Uh, I've also gone ahead and have three... 3D printed some uh, some more struts for this side. Uh, obviously, it's a different colour because it's a different colour uh, PLA uh, 
that was printed on. So, but it's, once you paint it in grey prime, it won't make no difference. Uh, and they also made these like half sphere ball f joint things to uh, basically just glue in various positions as well. To just basically add a bit more detail. So yeah, so I'll go ahead and I'll start gluing all these in place. Okay guys, we'll go ahead and we'll leave this to dry and then uh, might think about giving it a great prime. Okay guys, so now that this resin's hardened, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give it a blast of uh, grey primer and see uh, see how she's looking. Okay guys, so I ended up, uh, there was a few little sticky patches where unfortunately me just putting the uh, the resin straight on there didn't fully, uh, wasn't fully mixed in. I thought it would have, but unfortunately it didn't. So there's a few sticky parts so what I did was I mixed a little bit more and I went over those parts with a little bit more resin but unfortunately it's uh I don't know if it's shown up but it's uh it's it's basically took away all the pattern so I'm not a huge fan of this at the moment so what I'm thinking about doing is uh, I'm gonna take a, a finger sander and I'm going to try and sand off as much of this resin as possible and try and get it back to the uh, original uh, tile and then hopefully we can uh, route new, uh, new new sections in between to highlight it more as a, as a uh, tile so yeah unfortunately it's just one of those things uh, but hopefully uh, for a bit of work we can save it again as much of that sticky resin as I could uh, so obviously it's more of a, a pattern now uh, on the plus side the extra resin has seemed to have uh, made the tiles more universal uh, to look at so you can't see the individual patterns on them uh, but they are still quite sticky to the touch so unfortunately the uh, I'm going to try one more thing uh, basically, I'm going to go over it with wood filler again, and hopefully the wood filler will go over the sticky resin and uh, cure, so it's nice and solid, and then I can sand it. Uh, if that doesn't work, then uh, unfortunately I think I might have to uh, boycott this bit and do it again. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and give this a quick sand and see what we're left with. Okay guys, so now that that's smooth, uh, running my hand across it, there's no more 
uh, sticky resin bits no more it's all nice and smooth and now we've got those uh, lines in between the tiles to highlight that the tiles also the extra resin that did cure uh, seems to have uh, made the uh, tiles more universal so for the next stage let's go ahead and re gray re prime this and see how it looks Okay guys, so here's where we're up to at the moment. So as you can see there, the uh, the boiler's been grey primed. Uh, it's still not perfect, but uh, it's looking a lot better than it was. Uh, so this is going to be lined up in in uh, in a straight edge with this uh, where the where the wood's routed, so it's uh, it's nice and flush, so to speak. Uh, and then this is going to be going here somewhere. So. I was thinking somewhere around about here, so this would be on here, and then obviously uh, that would mean that this would need to be further in here. So what I'll have to do is mark off where these circles line up to, and for the next part, I'm thinking about. Uh, drilling two holes in the sides and then this can then fit in place and then be glued and then it's all one piece okay guys so I went ahead and I mapped out uh, where the circles should uh, should go they don't look symmetrically lined up but that's just because uh, one of these is further back than the other one so it makes it look a little bit uh, a little bit weird, but uh, it should be should be the right uh, the right holes or the right size. So yeah, so I basically got a step bit in a uh, in a drill. So yeah, hopefully this goes all well. Okay guys, so for the most part I think that's worked out rather well. Uh, I feel like I need a tiny bit more moved out from inside here, but I can't do that with a step bit drill because it'll just make a bigger hole at the top. So I'll have to go in with a uh, little bit of a sanding bit to clean that out. But uh, for the most part that uh, has worked out really well. So I'll clean this out and then we'll uh, glue this in place and then uh, we can crack on with the next part of the build. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I put two bits of uh, circular cut out rubber uh, around the uh, the pipes. The reason is, is I'm, f I'm going to put some glue in the hole and then I'm going to push this into place and then uh, these rubber seals are going to be then pushed further back and they're going to be glued in position uh, and it'll hide the connection seam, or at least that's the idea anyway. Okay guys, so we'll go ahead and we'll leave that to dry and then we'll crack on with the next piece. Okay guys, so for the next part I want to go ahead and I want to incorporate this base in place. Uh, the main reason why I want to use this base is because it's got the, the connection plugs to uh, for his feet so he fits in place. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this part here. I like it on the actual statue but it doesn't work with this diorama so I'll need to screw this into place and then basically fill in over it like a bit of concrete or something or a bit of resin uh, basically just to uh, make like a um, like a concrete looking floor I suppose uh, but obviously it'll house over this so you won't see this uh, the only problem is as you can see it uh, it, it overlaps the uh, the boiler so the choices are I can either trace around it cut that part off and then the boiler can sit flush and then that just moves up up to it or I uh, I use it as it is um, 
so it's all nice and, and, and plain when I pour the concrete and then the this is separate but the only problem with that is if I level it up to where it is now uh, that would have to be moved up to there but uh, as you can see uh, Freddy's feet are down here so if I wanted to keep that as is that would have to be uh, cut away so yeah it's a bit of a head scratcher uh, I think for now uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut away this back piece and then we'll see how it looks <laughs> Okay guys, so this is roughly how I want uh, Freddy Krueger to be displayed. So he's in the centre, but he's not too front forward facing because obviously we will be adding a name plaque at some point soon. Uh, I went ahead and I cut away this back piece. I uh, gave myself a little bit extra room to play with, so I'm not, uh, I'm not too close up to the boiler. So yeah, so for the next part I'll, uh, I'll trace around where this needs to go. And then we can think about uh, screwing this to the base. Okay guys, so we'll leave that to dry and then we'll crack on with the next part. Okay guys, I've just gone ahead and I've just checked and this video is getting uh, close to the hour mark now. Uh, I've decided to call this uh, just part one of the video. Please uh, tune back in for part two. If uh, if you want to make sure that you don't uh, miss out on that, please uh, hit that uh, subscribe button. And uh, hopefully you won't miss out on part two. Uh, in part two, we're basically going to be uh, adding the, the concrete flooring. Uh, we're going to be painting it all up. So the background, uh, the boiler, there's going to be a few little easter eggs here and there. We're going to be adding um, some uh, lighting effects and some flicker bulbs into the bottom of this. Uh, obviously we have to paint up the skulls uh, of the children on the inside. And then uh, there'll be a name uh, nameplate tag added to the bottom. And then we'll obviously be adding the, uh, the felt to the bottom of the base as well. So yes, yeah, so there's uh, still a lot to do. So uh, yeah, if you like the build so far, please smash that uh, like button and uh, share on Facebook and Twitter because it helps new people find my channel which I'm always appreciative of. Thank you very much. If you have any comments, uh, write in the comment section below if you have any ideas uh, that you would like to see incorporated. Uh, same again, just add in the description bar below. Uh, if I've already filmed part two, there'll be a link in the description bar below, but if it just says coming soon, then obviously I'm still filming it. So yeah, so nothing else to say, but thank you for watching. Uh, see you next time. Thank you very much, and goodbye.